work for a remote company called Zilk. It is a normal part of our everyday workflow. In fact, there are a few things that we do every day that make using Git second nature. So today I wanna to share some of those processes with you. Channel. My name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just looking at getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to go or what resources to trust. I want to help you level up and get to where you want to be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. Git is a big part of development because it's one way that developers are able to work together. If you're not sure what it is, why you would want to use it, how to install it on your computer, be sure to check out some of the other videos in my series. Link in the card above. Number one, one feature per one branch. One of the most important things for working with Git as a team is making sure that you have one feature to one branch. I talked about this briefly in the branching video, but every feature or every bug should have its own branch. This allows multiple people to work on multiple features without ever worrying about overriding each other's code. Plus, this keeps things nice and organized. Tip number two, pushing your code. At the end of every day, we push our code. Even if our code is broken, we push our work in progress. We're firm believers in paired programming. Our team is spread across four different time zones. So naturally, East Coasters are gonna get up earlier and the West Coast is gonna work later. This requires handoffs. Not quite as common, but if a team member were to get sick and has to take the day off, their pair needs to be able to continue to make progress. Otherwise, it's two developers down instead of just one. Yeah. So at the end of the day, push your code. A lot of times that commit will look like this, WIP, which stands for work in progress, and then a brief description of what you're doing. This is good communication. It lets someone know when you're not finished. Tip number three, pulling from master. In the same vein, begin each day by pulling your code. Your pair may have made progress while you were out, and so you wanna make sure that you begin each day with the most recent version of your code. This isn't just about pulling from the branch that you're working on, but also pulling from master as well, because as new features get pulled and merged into master, you wanna make sure that that's included in your branch as well. If you get too far behind the master branch, then when it becomes time for you to merge your code into master, you'll hit a merge conflict. Conflict. We've talked about how to resolve a merge conflict. It's still not fun. It's just better for everybody if you pull often. Tip number four, rebasing versus merging. When it comes time to merge your code into master, rebase instead of merge. Let me explain the difference. In a typical workflow, we have our master branch. When we wanna create a new feature, we'll create a separate branch just for that code. When that feature is done, we'll merge it back into master. Simple and straightforward, right? Plus, this graph represents history well. This is fine and great, but what if you're working on a lot of bugs or features all at once? With a team, this is common, and the graph can get pretty crazy and convoluted. So one of the things that we do instead is rebase. A rebase takes your commits and reapplies them with a new position. You're essentially moving your starting point, hence rebasing. It will look like the code evolved in a single straightforward line. To keep our history even cleaner, we'll squash our feature into a single commit. To be clear on the process, let's go back to our jokes repository that we've used in some of the other Git videos. I'm gonna create some new jokes. I'm gonna create a new branch. Git checkout B, new jokes. In VS Code, let's open our knockknockjokes.txt file and add this joke to the bottom. Knock knock, who's there? Bed, bed who? Bet you can't guess who I am. <laughs> that is save and let's commit it. Now let's add another joke to our riddles.txt file. What is the capital of Washington? W. Get it? The capital of Washington is a capital W. <laughs> Save it, commit it, and push it. Just for good measure, let's add another joke. Still in the riddles.txt file, let's add this to the bottom of our file. Why couldn't the pirate play cards? Because he was sitting on the deck. <laughs> Save it and commit it. That's everything, so let's create our pull request. On GitHub, let's click on the compare and pull request button. 
and I'm gonna title our PR. Added three new jokes. In the description, I have our pull request template that we created in the pull request video. Since these are just text changes, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I'm gonna delete everything except the feature description of what we did. Three new jokes. And submit it. Ideally, a team member would review our PR and provide feedback or approve it. And then once approved, we would rebase and squash our commits. I'm gonna head back over to the terminal and I'm gonna go to the master branch, and make sure that I have the most recent set of code. So git checkout master, git pull. Ah, some changes did get made. Made some changes while you weren't looking so that it would feel like a real project. Now we wanna jump back over to our new jokes branch. So git checkout new jokes. Let's start rebasing. Git rebase dash I master. If you'll remember from the resolving merge conflicts video, we talked about the dash I. It means interactive and we'll pull up the Vim editor. We want to change the word pick to squash for all but the first commit. We're going to squash everything down into that single commit. So in Vim, I have to hit I to go into insert mode and now we can make our text changes that to say squash, change that to say squash, hit escape colon WQ to save and quit. Okay, we did hit a merge conflict in the process. It looks like it's in the knock knock jokes.txt file. So let's open that in VS code. Let's remove these extra characters. Get the file looking just the way we want it. Save it. And then in the terminal, we can type Git add knock knock jokes dot text git rebase dash 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 continue. This is a commit resolving our merge conflict. So I'm going to type I to change the message and I'm going to say resolved knock knock joke. Hit escape colon WQ enter. Now that the squash is finished, it wants us to edit the commit message. Remember, we want to keep our PR small, so we should be able to summarize everything into a single commit. I'm going to type I to go into insert mode. And I'm just going to add at the top that we added, added new jokes. Hit escape key colon WQ to save and quit. Now let's push our code, so git push. Our push was rejected, but let's try it again this time with a flag. So I'm going to say git push dash dash force with lease. This will allow us to overwrite changes that I have made, but it will be rejected if anyone else has made changes. Great, it went through. Now we can go back over to GitHub and click the merge pull request button. I'm going to confirm the merge and delete the branch. And then just for good measure, if we click on the commits tab, you'll see that there's only one commit and this is our squashed commit. Tip number five, co-authoring. As I mentioned earlier, we're firm believers in paired programming, which usually looks like writing code together through screen share. We want our commits to reflect the combined effort and not just to document whose computer the code was written on. Git has a feature for co-authors. Within the terminal, when you make a commit, you'll write out the command as usual. Git commit m added a joke, but instead of closing the quotations, add two empty lines. Then use co-authored by person's name and their email address. If you have more than one person, you can add another line the same way. And then, of course, when you're done, close the quotes and hit enter. If you use VS Code, there's a plugin called Git Mob that makes this even easier. I'll show you. In VS Code, I'm gonna go to the Git tab and I can stage a change by clicking on this plus button. I can type my commit message here at the top. But then you'll also notice that there's a section here at the bottom called Git Mob Co-Authors. And I can add any one of the people listed 
as a co-author by clicking on the plus button next to their name and you'll see that it adds this co-authored by line in my commit message. If you want to add people to your co-authored section here, it's really easy. You can just click on this page icon and it'll pull up your .git co-authors file. If you're wondering, on a Mac, this is saved inside your user folder, but because the name starts with a period, it's not gonna show up within the finder. If you wanna add someone, the easiest thing to do is to copy this block of code, add a comma to the end, and paste it. Uh, then update the information with the new person. Give that a save and you'll notice that git mob updates on the left. Once that commit has been pushed to GitHub, you'll see all those co-author avatars appear next to that commit. Done. All the code for this video has been posted on GitHub. Feel free to download it, use it, modify it, share it, whatever. Have at it. If you like this video and want to see more videos about web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.